Hello everyone, this is Kirtana, course narrator for tutormash.com. This session we will be covering scheduling project and float. Before watching this session, make sure you have gone through our previous videos for better understanding. Scheduling project in Primavera is using CPM technique. And before you schedule, please check the calendar, user preferences, plan start and data date, layout, WBS and activities. Importance of this checks have already been described in our previous videos. Once you have done with the checklist, press F9 in the software and you will get this window. Check the date and time is on and then press schedule. Alright, let's begin Pramavara and see how it is done. Here is an apartment project where only structure part is concerned. Go to dates tab and check plan start and data date are same. Then go to default tab and check the calendar again. If you want, you can go to the calendar option. Make sure it's default. It's an 8 hour calendar. Project starts at 8 am, finishes at 5 pm. Check the time periods. Everything is fine now and close the tab and open the project. Check the WBS. You can make it in table views. Structure splits to basement 1, ground floor, first floor, etc. And basement 1 splits again to excavation and so on. Go back to activities. Check all the activities, duration, predecessors, etc. Check the date and time as well. Here there is no fracture duration. So all the checks are done. Go to schedule icon or press F9. Check the date and time and press schedule. After scheduling, check the date and time. Sometimes there is a chance for fractured duration. But in this schedule, there is not. Also, check the total float and free float. Now, let's see the difference between total float and free float. Here is an example for better understanding. This is a schedule containing 11 activities where some got total float and free float. Look at this activity A, which got 10 days float and 0 days free float. When you delay activity A, automatically activity D also gets delayed. Similarly, when you delay activity C, it will delay activity G. This is total float. That is, when you use total float, automatically its successor activity also gets delayed but project duration remains same. Now look at activity D where free float is 10 days. If you delay activity D, it won't affect its successor till a certain time. Similarly, look at activity G. You can delay activity G for 2 days without affecting its successor G. So, that's free float. That is, when you use free float, its successor activity does not get affected. That's all about our session. Hope you all understood. If you're really interested to explore more, please subscribe and keep watching tutomash.com. Thank you.